long known but still amazing is that a moving bicycle can balance itself. As can be seen in this video, Jour de Fête by Jacques Tati from 1949. Now, most people think that this is a trick, but it isn't. Bicycles can do that. The current bicycle design, the bicycle as we know it today, is already more than 100 years old. And what started in around 1820 by a hobby horse designed by Carl von Dries, matured finally around 1890 in what we call the safety bicycle, being a bicycle with equal-sized wheels, a chain drive, and pneumatic tires. Around that time, in 1896, Cambridge undergraduate Francis Whipple used rigid body dynamics equations to show in theory what was already known in practice, that a safety bicycle moving at the right forward speed can show this self-stability. Unfortunately, he didn't tell why. Now, to understand the essence of balance, we first look at a simpler problem. So we're going to look at how do we balance a stick on our open hand. We balance a stick on our open hand by moving the support in the direction of the fall. So if the stick falls to the right, we move our hand to the right, and if the stick moves to the left, we move our hand to the left. And that's how we balance a stick. Now, a bicycle is actually balanced in the same way, although we're not able to move the contact points. However, we can use the steering assembly, but in a stationary bicycle, that isn't doing much. In a moving bicycle, when we steer it, it moves the contact points sidewards. So if we steer to the left in a moving bicycle, the contact points go to the left. And if we steer a moving bicycle to the right, the contact points go to the right. So in order to balance the bicycle, we have to steer into the direction of the undesired fall. If we fall to the right, we steer to the right, and the bike pop up, pops up again. And if we fall to the left, we steer to the left, and the bike comes back up again. This can be seen in a video when we take a bicycle and we bring it up to speed. We perturb it sideways, and you see it oscillating. But if you look very close, you see that first the leaning starts, after which the steering. So the mechanism of steer into the fall is the mechanism which balances this bicycle. Now, most people... One thing is, of course, the big question here is, of course, how does a bicycle do that? It looks like some automatic control. Well, most people think that bicycles balance because of something called the gyroscopic effect. And here I have a gyro, a gyro being a fast spinning wheel. And indeed, a fast spinning gyro has the tendency to remain its orientation in space. It's sort of rigid in space. However, this rigidness is not what keeps the bicycle upright. Because if you take a bicycle and you tie the handlebars to the rear frame, then a stationary bicycle will fall over just as quickly as a moving bicycle. So the gyroscopic effect is here not stabilizing the bike. However, another quirky three-dimensional thing is happening in a, in a gyro. If a gyro is spinning about the spinning axis, and it's tilted about a second axis, it will start turning about a third axis. So that's a real three-dimensional thing. And in this case, the gyro is in fact the front wheel of the bicycle in disguise. So first we bring the gyro up to speed, and imagine that this is the front wheel of the bicycle. It's turning in this direction. Now I'm going to lean the bicycle to the left, and you will see that the gyro automatically steers to the left. And I will lean the bicycle to the right, and you will see that the gyro steers to the right. And this is also 
what Felix Klein, famous for the Klein bottle, Arnold Sommerfeld, nominated 81 times for the Nobel Prize, and Fritz Noether, the brother of Emmy Noether, thought. In their four-volume book on gyroscopes from 1910, they dedicated a whole volume to the self-stability of the bicycle, in which they proved, by a mathematical proof on the Whipple bicycle model, the necessity of this gyroscopic effect for self-stability. However, if you follow their derivation in detail, you will find two sign errors. And when you correct the sign errors, it's not so obvious anymore that you need the gyroscopic effect for self-stability. Other parameters then tend to be also important. Another widespread claim about self-stability is because of trail or a caster. Now, as an example, I have a caster here, which is common in grocery carts or under chairs. Uh, even the cameraman has one under his uh, thing. Now, what is a caster? A caster has a steering axis and it has a wheel. When the caster is moving that way, the contact point is behind the steering axis and the wheel will always follow the steering axis. So wherever you go, the wheel will follow you. It's like a dog on a leash. And indeed, if we look at the bicycle, then the front wheel assembly of the bicycle is a caster in disguise. Only in this case, there's a little more subtle geometry going on. Because in the bicycle, we have a tilted steering axis. But if we look closely at this geometry, we see that although at first it looks as if the, by the, by the bended fork, it looks as if the wheel is in front of the steering axis, if you elongate the steering axis to the ground, you will see that the contact point is behind the steering axis. So a bicycle front wheel is a caster in disguise. And indeed, in a famous paper uh, from the 1970s by David Jones, he claims that bicycles are self-stable because of this caster. He starts from a potential energy model, and there he derives that the steer into the fall is only possible when you have positive trail in a bicycle. However, if you closely go through the derivation, you notice that it's a potential energy model, so the bicycle is not moving. And when you correct his derivation for a moving bicycle, then you will see that oh, other, other terms are also important, and you cannot pinpoint the self-stability to this one item, the trail. So we suspected that these simple images were not really uh, behind the explanation of the self-stability. Now, in our quest to find the essence of self-stability, we looked at simpler and simpler and simpler models, until we finally came with this two-mass skate bicycle, with a gyro-free and a trail-free bicycle. The bicycle is gyro-free because we used very small wheels and we mounted on top of these wheels, the same wheels, counter-rotating the original ones. Now, with these two wheels in the same frame, the net angular momentum is not present anymore. We also uh, removed the trail in this bicycle. As you, oh, here you see the video about the um, killing of the angular momentum. We also killed the trail in the, in the bicycle. Well, we even made the trail a little bit negative, so such that the contact point is in front of the, of the steering axis, to be dead sure that we have no trail in this bicycle. Then the next thing is what we do. We bring the bicycle up to speed, and you will see it balances itself. Moreover, you can also bring the bike up to speed and perturb it by hitting it sideways, and you will see it starts oscillating, but the oscillation dies out and the bike remains self-stable. This bicycle proves that you cannot explain self-stability in simple terms. Bicycles are not stable because of gyro because you can make a self-stable bicycle without gyro. We did that. Bicycles are not self-stable because of trail. You can take that away, too. 
we did that. Then what is the essence of bicycling in this, in this machine? Well, it's gyro-free and it's trail-free, so those mechanisms don't work. But if you look at the mass distribution, you will see it's a bit quirky. The mass of the rear frame is up front high, and the mass on the steering assembly is a little bit in front of the axis of the steering assembly, making it seemingly unstable. Now, in its tendency to fall over, the, the, the front assembly will fall faster than the rear assembly, because a small stick will fall faster than a long stick. However, the two parts are connected in the steering axis, and in, in its attempt for the steering assembly to fall faster, it induces the steering into the direction of the fall. And we believe that that is the mechanism that stabilizes this, this machine. However, there are more parameters in the model. And when you fish around in, in, this, in a wide variety of, in the wide design space of the model, you can find a plethora of, of bicycle designs which are self-stable. Very rich solution. Now, what is the relevance of this work to bicycle design? And I have two examples. Let me start with the first example. Folding bicycles. Well, most of you have ridden a folding bicycle, and you know from experience they fold very well, but they do not ride so nicely. And the first thing people say is, oh, that's obvious. It has these small wheels. But that need not be. So let's look at this design. When we look at it, it's clearly that the bicycle is an evolutionary design, because in all these designs you will see in the front assembly a steering axis tilt of about 72 degrees and a trail of 10 centimeters. Now, probably by tinkering on this steering assembly with the angles and the trail and the mass distribution, you can probably make a folding bicycle which is self-stable and shows good handling. Another example is rear wheel steering. Now, everybody knows that a rear wheel steered vehicle is highly unstable. And most of you have experienced it when you back up your car quickly. That's an unstable process. So, building a rear wheel steered bicycle is probably not such a good idea. And indeed, if you take a bicycle and you move it backwards, it's highly unstable. <laughs> However, if you have listened carefully to this talk, maybe by fishing around in this design space, and indeed, fishing around and starting from the wrong foot, we finally came up with this design of a rear-wheel steered bicycle, which theory told us was self-stable. We gave the challenge to the students, they built the design, and the same with the TMS bicycle, you go to the sports hall, you bring it up to speed, and the thing stays upright. And you can bring it up to speed, and you can hit it sideways, and it starts oscillating, but the oscillation dies out, and it's clearly self-stable. Now, again, a funny-looking machine which you cannot ride. So we gave a next challenge, can you build a rideable rear-wheel machine? And here it is, the design, on theory, was proven to be self-stable. And again, when you take an inexperienced rider, you put him on the machine, he needs two minutes to master its operation. And that's clearly, I think, also a proof of that it is a self-stable design. Within two minutes, he can master this. Now, what is the relevance of this work to society? If we look at the mortality rate in traffic, that steadily goes down, and that's very good news. However, if we look at the serious injured in traffic, we see that the number of cyclists go up every year, and that's bad news. Looking in more detail at these figures, we see that it's mostly among the elderly. And a reasonable explanation would be, oh yes, of course, people are getting older, and more older people are, are, are riding a bicycle. But as you heard from the other talk, if you look more detail to the figures, then the reason behind this is maybe something else. Because 
most of these accidents are so-called single vehicle accidents. So they are not hit by a bus, they are not hit by a car, they just fall over. And in this falling over, the self-stability of the bicycle plays an important role. You can imagine that if you improve the self-stability of the bicycle, that the risk for falling over diminishes, and also the risk for seriously injuries. Now, how do you improve the self-stability of the bicycle? Well, it has to steer into the fall, right? And how do you do that? You can do a change in the mechanical design, or you can use electronics by making it actively self-stable. And as an example, I have here a bicycle, a Lego Mindstorms bike, also built by one of our students. It has two motors, one on the rear for propulsion and one motor for steering. It has a small controller and sensors. And then uh, by applying the very simple rule of steer into the fall, it turns out that this initially unstable bicycle is stable, as you can see here, when it moves on the floor of the of our lab. Clearly an example of an actively stabled machine. In conclusion, I have shown that a bicycle can be self-stable without gyro and trail. I do not deny that these are important factors in a normal bicycle, but other parameters are also important like the mass distribution. As a rule, we have found that any stable bicycle can be made unstable by changing either the gyro or the trail or the mass distribution. But also, most unstable bicycles can be made stable by changing one of the three design parameters. By a lot of clever tinkering, bicycles has ev have evolved into this great design around 1890. Now, my vision is that with careful experiments and validated computer models, we can move past this 19th century bicycle evolution into a 21st century bicycle revolution.